It's great to be with all of you. It's an honor to be speaking with you today. Uh, I appreciate you uh, coming back in from the plenary session, and, and I appreciate uh, that it's also after lunch. Um, but I'm really excited to be here today, uh, and I've got a great team, uh, a panel that I'll be bringing to, bringing to the stage shortly, uh, and I'm excited to get to them. But before I make my remarks and get to that panel, I want to do something important, and, and you see it on the screen there. It's a shout out to you. I want to thank you for all that you do for the well-being and prosperity of people in Tennessee. You're making a difference, and here's why. The people that you train, the jobs that you create and maintain, the places and spaces that you support, do more to positively affect the health and the prosperity of people in Tennessee than my office, my department, or even the healthcare sector can. Whether or not you think about it this way, by getting up and doing what you do every day to create jobs and drive education, as well as economic opportunity, you're making other people's lives better, more prosperous, and more healthy. Whether you lead a county government or represent your constituents in the General Assembly, or you lead a business or educate the next generation, you're building a stronger Team Tennessee, continuously creating a better playing surface and putting points on our Tennessee Health and Prosperity Scoreboard. The success of Team Tennessee is clearly evidenced by the results that you've been hearing about today and you'll hear about tomorrow. So along with sharing my deep appreciation for the team, I want to think with you for a few minutes about the game that we're playing and what it is we're really playing for. So consider for a moment that everybody in this room is on a basketball team. I'll be the center. <laughs> Randy, it might be hard to get open. Many Bears, you are definitely the point guard. So as with any team, we all bring different strengths and characteristics to the game that we play, but each player on my figurative basketball team has to be good at both offense, where you score points, and defense, where you keep scores from being scored against you and try to get back on offense. And any good basketball coach will tell you, you have to play both sides of the ball. How many people play basketball in this room? All right, so at least a good part of you are, are, are with me. So what does this game, this figurative game, look like? Well, there's that offense that scores points, for health and prosperity, and there's a defense that tries to keep our opponent from scoring. There's a court that we play on that influences the kinds of plays we can make, and an opponent that may surprise you. And four big things that this opponent puts in front of us every play. So on offense, our team scores points when we fulfill the potential of everyone in our state. A great example of scoring is when children find joy in reading and physical activity, both of which we know lead to success in academia and later in life. Some might think of uh, physical activity as an, as an optional, nice to do thing, but it's a fundamental of the game, like dribbling and passing. When men and women find meaningful work and find purpose in what they do, that is also fundamental. Purpose is fundamental. Purpose fosters a healthy, long, and prosperous life. So that is to say, as you heard Commissioner Boyd say a minute ago, health and prosperity are deeply linked. Show me a healthy community, and I'll show you a prosperous one. Show me a prosperous community, and I'll show you a healthy one. Our mission at the Tennessee Department of Health is to protect, promote, and improve health and prosperity for people in Tennessee. And as many of you work to recreate jobs in Tennessee, you're furthering not only the prosperity of your employees, but of their families and of their communities. I think most of you would agree with me that a healthy workforce is one of the most important economic development tools we can foster. When we think of economic development, we might think of a number of sites we have for businesses to locate, or roads, or sewers, or water. We'll need to support those sites. We might think of broadband access, too. And of course, we need an educated and trained workforce. 
but isn't the health of our workforce just as important? Without a healthy workforce, we can't reach our true economic potential as a state. So in other words, we could get great uniforms and great equipment, but if we can't field a team that's physically in shape and mentally ready to play the game, we're not likely to score many points for our offense. Every team also needs a game plan, a strategy. The Tennessee state government, we have essential offensive and defensive strategies that can be summed up in our governor's five priorities, education and workforce development, fiscal strength, and efficient, effective government, health and welfare, that's my favorite, jobs and economic development, and public safety. Each of us, by focusing on these areas as we do, and playing our roles on the team, are collectively creating the conditions that enable all of us to live up to our full potential as human beings, to have life and to have it abundantly. So what do some offensive plays look like? Well, schools that focus on the health of the child as well as their academic performance. We're the only state in the nation that offers a coordinated school health program in every school district. And the evidence suggests that healthy children have better academic performance. And a child cannot achieve his or her optimal mental, physical, and emotional health, can't learn to her fullest potential. We should be proud of the way Team Tennessee has invested in, in the education and health of its future workforce. Our return on investment, our return on investment is a high school graduation rate that's gone from 77.9% to 88.5% over the last 10 years. Okay. So that's great in and of itself, but that's a leading indicator for our future health and prosperity as a state. Likewise, you already heard about the innovative Drive to 55 initiative in the Tennessee Promise. We anticipate a more fulfilling quality of life through greater employment, higher income, and greater prosperity and health. What's another example of offense? Well, people, all of us want choices. Transportation options that provide choices like sidewalks and bike paths provide not only opportunity for physical activity, but also provide more attractive places and spaces to live, work, raise a family, and spend money. Studies are clear that areas that offer amenities like greenways, parks, farmers markets, and areas of walkability are more attractive to businesses and residents and raise property values and raise tax bases. We're social creatures. We seek opportunities to spend time with other people, and we may or may not realize, and it doesn't matter if we do, that those activities also contribute to our health. These examples all point to the object of our game, winning, winning. And winning is living life to its fullest, exercising what our founding fathers called our inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In Tennessee, the points we're scoring for health and prosperity enhance all of our lives. So let's talk about the conditions of our figurative basketball court and why they matter to our game. These conditions, like education, differential economic opportunities and incentives, adverse childhood experiences, negative stresses, and even positive opportunities are essentially the conditions of the court. So just think about a nicely polished gym floor or a dirt court. Where would you rather play the game? You can make great plays anywhere, but it's just harder to do in some places than in others. Whether we're talking about Tennessee or around the world, we are not playing on the same court. We have disparities. And the, whether we can compare neighborhoods and counties or states and nations, these are our challenges. These court conditions, because they are all around us, greatly influence the plays we're able to make. Consider this child. This baby, born in the United States, will live a full year and a half less than 
his or her peers born in one of the wealthy 35 countries in the nation. And if he's born in Tennessee, we can expect him, I'm sorry to tell you, to live four years less on average. Now consider this child. This baby born in the United States of America will live eight years less than his peers born in one of those more developed countries of the OECD, and nine and a half years less than his peers in Tennessee. And compared to those other wealthy countries, and think about this, compared to those other wealthy countries, we spend nearly twice as much on health care. We can't treat or spend our way out of this problem because where you live affects your health and how you live affects your health. Place matters also. Everything from social relationships and incidental physical activity to the availability of healthy food, to education, public safety, transportation opportunities, those all affect the conditions of our court, which in turn affect both our ability to score and defend. So think about this. If you have to constantly dribble around mud holes on a dirt court, it's going to change how you play the game. It's a surface, if it's a nice surface and it's smooth, you don't have to worry about your environment, just your opponent. So what about the opponent? In truth, our opponent is us. It's us. We're up against ourselves, our human nature, our ancient biology, the reward system right here that drives our behaviors. We are driven to do what our brains find rewarding. On one hand, this is a problem. Our biology, after all, is very hard to change. We're playing against our innate tendency to want to do more of what we find pleasurable. And as we know, too much of anything is typically a bad thing. Those bad things that are draining our health and prosperity the most, we call the big four. They are physical inactivity, excessive caloric intake, especially in the form of sugar, tobacco and nicotine addiction, and other substance use disorders. Those four things taken together are taking years from our lives, years from our lives, and life from our years. On the other hand, this opponent is good news. Because besides the big four things that we find, there are things in, in the big four that we find rewarding, like healthy, thriving families, learning and educational success, personal achievement and career and hobby, not to mention completing that 5K you always wanted to do. Some of you are triathletes, I get that, but not everybody. But anybody can enhance their physical activity. The beauty of all of that is that we can find rewards in improving our own lives. And we can be helped along or challenged by our playing surface. The conditions of the court can steer us towards the positive side of the big four. So they can steer us towards physical activity, healthier foods and healthier portions, towards clean air in our healthy lungs, and away from chemical hijackers of our award system in our brains. Or the conditions of the court can steer us towards the negative side. What we want is to be steered towards the more positive and ultimately more rewarding behaviors. Remember what we're playing for, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As leaders, it's our job to smooth out the court so that health and prosperity are easier to obtain and thus more rewarding than nicotine or prescription drugs or sugar or not moving our bodies enough. So here's why it's key to address our playing surface if we want to defeat the big four. And if you remember only one thing from this talk, I'd like you to remember this. The big four are linked. They are deeply linked. They are not separate and distinct phenomenon. While they might seem separate, these big four behaviors are fundamentally related to each other because they are deeply linked to our braids reward system, deeply embedded right here, important for our very survival. Each of us is vulnerable to the charms of the big four, and for good reason. Our reward system is the same thing that drives us to provide for our family, 
to seek the respect of our peers, to compulsively check our text messages, and to reach for that next cigarette. And as a result, our award system, our true opponent in this figurative game, can help us hone our health and win, or can force a turnover where we lose the ball and lose. So I'm saying the big four, excessive caloric intake, physical inactivity, tobacco and nicotine addiction, and other substance use disorders driving all 10 of our leading causes of death here in Tennessee, the big four can play us. So think about this. In the United States today, nearly two thirds of us are over a healthy weight. There's really no question about it. There's the evidence. We're all susceptible to the charms of the big four and collectively we're being played. But we're not helpless against the big four. It is possible for an individual to win using only his or her willpower, but it's really, really hard. And it's gonna take more than individual willpower to defeat our opponent at scale. It will take leadership at every level of our state to cover up those mud holes and replace them with quality wood planks to build a strong playing surface that makes it easier for us to dribble around our opponent and score. So how do we build this playing surface? How do we know where to paint the lines? We build it by taking a look at the decisions we all make on a daily basis to make sure we're thinking about how the decisions might affect both our prosperity and our health. There's a word that nicely sums up this process, livability. To have a livable community is one that enables healthy choices that lead to greater prosperity without people ha even having to think about health at all. A few seemingly small examples of a community action towards livability can add up to big change. One example is a greenway system in Manchester that connects schools, housing, parks, recreation centers, and the downtown. More than 75% of the population uses this. They use it to get where they're going. They use it uh, to, uh, to just simply enjoy time with family and friends. Uh, it really doesn't matter how or why they use it. It works all the same. In Irwin, a new zoning code has reestablished residences in the downtown. People are now living downtown and shops and restaurants are staying open later and seeing more customers. People are, are being active in those places and spaces and getting that social engagement, and that's good for everybody. In Chattanooga, they essentially doubled their parks acreage through joint use agreements, so their schools could be places where residents could take advantage of those grounds after hours. In Knoxville, the Great Schools Partnership, a unique public and private partnership with staff dedicated to creating healthy communities is working to address challenges for families like job training and social services which end up impacting health and critically attendance in schools and the academic performance of their students. Places like Dyersburg, Martin, and Brownsville are doing things like rebuilding Main Street sidewalks, adding lampposts and benches, creating greenways and safe routes to school, and ownership of the health of the community is being infused by leaders both elected and community leaders really focused on a culture of health in their community. And, and I know, Mayor Rawls, you're in the, you're, you're in the audience, Asaya, big fan. Appreciate what you're doing, sir. We continue to hear stories from across Tennessee. I could go on about this. I've had the privilege of standing in every town square in, 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 uh, in, in the county seats of Tennessee across our state. And we just have, they, they go from awesome uh, to, to incredible. We just have beautiful places and spaces. And for our citizens, these activities mean higher property values. For our governments, they mean better tax bases. And for all of us, they mean greater health and prosperity. The Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development is a strong supporter of livability in its three-star initiative now active in 95 counties. 60 communities are, are moving towards a culture of health and livability by engaging in Governor Haslam's Healthier Tennessee Communities Initiative and seeking recognition. So to bring together actions and ideas throughout state government, several departments are collaborating and gathering around the table to form a new livability collaborative whose mission is improving prosperity, quality of life, and health in Tennessee through state department collaboration in the area of policy, funding, and programming. 
We're just getting started, but already we have eight and counting state agencies, eight and counting state agencies collaborating to enhance each agency's existing livability initiatives like public art and creating spaces, connecting physical activity with academic performance, and providing healthy dining options and physical activity at our state parks. So in our figurative game, we all win in a phrase, and that's creating a culture of health, where the healthy choice isn't just the easy choice, kind of also has to be the rewarding choice, the obvious choice, the default choice. A culture of health is the winning strategy for our game because it ensures, ensures our court is optimized and gets our offense fired up to score. We can't forget the other important part of the game. I haven't talked about this yet. That's the defense. Defense is all about maintaining our gains and being able to agilely get back on offense where we score points. Most healthcare, most of what we do in public health is actually defense. Trying to keep diseases out or identify them early and keep them from getting worse. When it comes to health, our society, think about this, our society has allotted most of our team's efforts to defense. We're approaching nearly one out of every five dollars of our gross domestic product going towards health care. Almost all of it, 85 percent of it, on preventable chronic disease driven by those big four behaviors. So that's three trillion dollars that we can't spend on other national priorities. If our health sector were an independent country, if we're an independent country, it would be the fifth or sixth largest economy in the world, larger than the entire economy of the country of the United Kingdom. That three trillion dollars could buy a vehicle for a third of the population of the United States every year. That would probably make some OEM, manu uh, OEM folks very happy. We know we are living shorter lives in our peer countries that are not spending anywhere close to what we are in healthcare. So not only are we spending more than anyone else in the world, we're not getting the health value you'd expect to see from such a massive investment. Think about the babies you saw, saw earlier. Are they getting their full measure of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Take our defense against diabetes right here in Tennessee. More than, more than one in 10 people in Tennessee have a diagnosis of diabetes. Over the last three fiscal years, TennCare has been obligated to spend $75 million more dollars just on treating diabetes. And that's $75 million we don't have to spend on economic development, education, transportation, or other state priorities. Of course, of course, health care is essential when we need it. Some of us who are in this room certainly wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the care of good health care providers and all the people that support what, what they do. But health care isn't going to change our ability to mount an offense. It's not going to allow us to play offense against the big four. It's not incentivized to. It's incentivized to provide care. It's incentivized for defense. It defends against chronic disease and the loss of quality of life that the big four cause. So I postulate, it's not healthcare access we really want. It is health itself. The full concept of social, educational, economic, relational, and spiritual fabric that support health. We all want and deserve, every one of us, the opportunity to realize our own optimal health. So let me pause for a moment and just uh, ask for a show of hands for people who are enjoying this conference. Okay. You're with me? Now, as much as you're enjoying, as, as, as wonderful as this conference is that ECD has put on, and it is really, I, I really enjoy coming here every year. It's really uh, done incredibly well. Um, but I'm sure there's another place you could think about that you might rather be. So there's a place that you can think about that you might rather be, as much as you're enjoying the conference here, raise your hand. Okay, so a few of you are really bent on this conference, got that. A few of you just won't raise your hand, understand. Now, for those of you who are thinking about that, raise your hand really high if anybody thought, gosh, I'd really rather be in an emergency department today. How about, how about a CT scanner, diagnostic center, ambulatory surgical treatment center? Uh -uh. How about your doctor's waiting room? 
even if there's a really great magazine? So that's it. We don't want access or care as much as what we really want. We want it to be there when we need it. But isn't what we really want simply health itself? We can't treat or spend our way to better health. We can't. We've tried. The reasons we're not getting value for dollar on this massive investment is because we're spending the money too late after the preventable disease occurs and on the wrong things, trying to fix, uh, fix chronic disease after it's already occurred. Imagine, imagine if you waited for your car's engine to seize before you changed the oil. That's essentially what we're doing when we wait until we get sick and look to healthcare to fix us and then start caring more about our health. Chronic diseases like heart disease, like diabetes, like chronic lung disease and preventable cancers are driving seven of our 10 leading causes of death in the United States and 85% of what we spend on health care. We're stuck in defense because we can't get our offense in gear. So we have to build an offensive strategy, a livability strategy, a strategy that builds a culture of health and prosperity. What moves us from defense to offense what scores points for life is something we call in health primary prevention. That's kind of a health term, but it simply means preventing the disease and injury before they ever have a chance to take hold on a life. It's how we move upstream to the times and places in our lives where crucial decisions determine whether we smoke our first cigarette. Did you know 90% of all current smokers began smoking? before they were legally able to purchase cigarettes, and 70% of them that are still smoking today wish they could quit. We want our kids not to get addicted to nicotine, but to develop a lifelong joy and habit of physical activity. Scoring these points sets us up for a win. I think most of us understand the importance of reading to our children, and I think we're beginning to understand the importance of reading on grade level to future academic and economic success, particularly looking at reading on grade level by the third grade. But do we understand the importance of encouraging physical activity, of playing actively with our children from an early age and fostering their natural instincts to be active? Do we know how important it is to create the habit and the competence and the confidence in physical activity by that same third grade? Do we see this as a fundamental or just a nice to do? Would we expect a child to teach herself to read? We're not sitting, sitting still on primary prevention at the Tennessee Department of Health. In 2013, we started a statewide initiative, and to date, we've had more than 2,000 projects complete or underway in all 95 counties, mostly focused on the big four, some other important things to our health but engaging 97% of our local workforce of 2,500 souls, plus our county health councils, we have them in every county, our boards of health, we have them in most counties, and our community leaders, along with thousands more in communities across Tennessee. Many cases, we've managed to get community leaders to take on these projects and, and lead them, while the Department of Health is playing a supportive role. So that's a great start, but it's not enough. If every project were a three-pointer, even if every project engaged 100 or 1,000 people, we'd still have a long way to go to hit everybody in our 6.6 .6 million population and as a team to defeat the big four. Active primary prevention can be a fiscal win for Tennessee. It's difficult to score immediate bankable points with primary prevention because the thing that you're doing with physical activity today prevents the disease years in the future. But by preventing disease in the first place, we reduce the need for health care. And with health care costs a leading driver of our state budget, the less health care our residents need, not only the better and longer their own lives, but the more we can all spend on priorities, the priorities that we want out of our government and our priorities towards livability. We have to balance our budget. Tennessee, we have to do that. That's a great thing. Lowest per capita debt in the nation. Really proud of that. The question is, are we able to do what we, knew we need to do collectively to afford other things besides more health care defense? Now, we do need the defense. 
Healthcare will always be an important part of our playbook. And through innovation and adaptation, we're using technology to deliver remote healthcare services through telemedicine and other patient-centric delivery platforms. And we're just beginning to provide emergency care through highly capable but smaller and closer freestanding emergency departments, just to name some innovations. These innovations mean that we're approaching a time when close proximity to a major healthcare facility will not matter nearly as much when choosing where to live or where to start a business. That's because your nearest and your preferred healthcare access point might be the one in your pocket. And when necessary, a much higher level of care will be closer, can come to you in mobile care, community paramedicine, or take you where you need to go without compromising the level of care or your outcome, when for ever, whatever reason, and it happens to all of us sometime, we have to rely on the defense. I want to leave you with one thought on the best play we can make to win our game. In basketball, how you score points matters. And the highest percentage shot you can make, slam dunk. The slam dunk in primary prevention is increasing physical activity. If you could bottle this, it would truly be a wonder drug. It's a game-changing play, and it's the most important thing we can do. As a slam dunk, physical activity can change the momentum of our game. It's a systems control for the human body. It stays with you, whether you're doing it at the moment or not. By getting people moving, we're lighting up portions of our brain's reward system. In doing that, there's less of a need or a desire to flood our reward system with unhealthy substances like too much sugar or nicotine, opioids, or other things that directly stimulate that reward center. Physical activity is amazing, upstream primary prevention, scoring points for optimal health throughout our life course. The challenge for all of us is to think about how we are fostering or creating opportunities for optimal health and how we can move upstream to prevent preventable disease and how we can all learn from or teach others. And what I just said, these are three points that are framing questions for our state's health plan directed by the legislature. I'll ask my colleague Eric Harkness to discuss that in a moment. But it's a plan and a process I'm hopeful will continue to bring together everyone in our state thinking about health and prosperity, the deep link between the two, our vulnerability to that big four. And moving upstream and adapting our offense is a very big challenge. But I am confident we can do it as, if we work together as Team Tennessee. Thank you.